Hi everybody, welcome back to SC Aviation. Today I'll show you how to set up the airliner flight management computer of X-Plane for an instrument flight. Enjoy! So, first of all we're going to tap on Route Menu then Pilot Route List and then FPLN, which stands for Flight Plan. Once you are in the Flight Plan page, you are going to input the international codes of the departure and arrival airports for the current flight. For our example, PHNL or Papa Hotel November Lima for Honolulu International and PHOG or Papa Hotel Oscar Golf for Kaului. Now, choose an appropriate airline and flight number for the route and input that next to flight number. For our example, it will be American Airlines Flight 1578. Now, before we continue, let's quickly do a 30 second review of the basic structure of most IFR flights. A typical IFR route from point A to point B is divided into 9 phases push, back end startup, taxi, takeoff, departure, en route, arrival, approach, landing, and taxi. Four of those phases are flown, the departure, the en route phase, the arrival and the approach, and they usually include transition waypoints or vectors, which work as branches that let the same procedure work for airplanes coming from different directions. Now let's go back to the aircraft. So, at this point, as a very responsible pilot, you should have a complete IFR flight plan. However, if you don't, here on the right hand corner is a video on a website called Simbrief that generates free airline styled flight plans with routing, altitudes, speeds and much more. For our example, I have already generated my flight plan, which looks like this. Now, to input the flight plan information into the airplane's computer, tap on dep r to bring up the departure and arrivals page. Tap on the departure for the departure airport and then select the departure runway and departure procedure. In this case I'm selecting runway 08 left, Palai 3 and LNY as a transition as my flight plan says. After this step is complete, tap on FPLN to return to the main route page and insert the route section. In case there is no end route portion, like in this very short Hawaiian island hop, Tap on the Dep R button to bring up the departures and arrivals page again. And now select the arrival and approach for the destination airport. For our example, the Camps 3 arrival, ILS Yankee Runway 02, and as transitions we will use vectors. At this time, the lateral navigation or LNAV is all set up. Now we need to set up the vertical navigation. To do that, tap on CLB to select the climb page. Now, here you will find the target speed, speed limits, and the transition altitudes. The target speed on the left is the speed that the airplane will aim to maintain as it climbs to flight level 300 or 31,000 feet. And above that comes the percentage of the speed of sound or Mach number that the airplane will maintain above flight level 300. This I recommend leaving as it is by default. Now, the speed limit speaks for itself, it's a speed limit that the airplane will have below a certain altitude. Here I do recommend setting 180 or 200 knots below 5000 above ground level to avoid rapid acceleration. Last, the transition altitude refers to the altitude above which the standard altimeter setting of 29.902 is used. In the US, this altitude is 18000 feet most of the time, so there is no need to worry about changing it, uh, changing this altitude. However, in Europe it tends to be lower, so it is important to check out the transition altitude for the Europe you are flying from on the internet. Next, tap on CRZ, which stands for cruise, and set the cruise speed and altitude. This can be found in the flight plan as well. Next, tap this for the descent page. This page shows target speed and limits, but it changes the transition altitude for transition level and adds a VPA or vertical path angle. The change from altitude to levels is because since you will be descending, you will be at a level when the change to altitude is made, contrary to when you are climbing and you change from altitudes to flight levels. The VPA refers to vertical path angle, which is the angle relative to the horizon at which the aircraft will descend. 
I recommend leaving it as it is at 2.5 degrees, but setting a bit more in case you need a steeper descent is not prohibited. At this point, the FMC is properly set up with LNAV and BNAV information. Additionally, you can set up the NAV RAD fix and hold pages, which I will explain right now. The NAV RAD pages lets you set up via the FMC navigation radios and communication radios, as well as courses and transponder code and mode. This comes in very handy in some airplanes that do not feature very elegant pedestal panels, which is where the radios and transponder usually are. However, as a tip, always insert an additional zero to set frequencies, because for some reason, if you try to input the frequencies just as they are, the FMC will not accept them. So, for example, 119.5 would be 119.05 and 132.35 would be 132.035. The fix page lets you add the navigation display a circumference and or a line relative to a fix. For example, you can set a 50 nautical mile radius circumference around the HNLVOR and also a line that comes out of its 340 radial, which would look like this on the navigation display. Finally, the hold page is automatically filled with the information from the first hold that could be uh, in the inserted routing which is usually one that comes after a missed approach. Nevertheless, the fix, quadrant, inbound radial and maximum speed for the hold can be set manually. Well, thank you very much for your time. Make sure to check out example number two and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.